Hello, all. This is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about doing a PhD in management after you do an engineering and an MBA sort of background, right? So you do an undergrad in engineering, then an MBA, and then you're sort of thinking about doing a PhD. So if you don't know, I am a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can, because it's just me, it's one person, and I wanna create something that's a little bit larger than me. And the way that I do that, I created, first of all, this sort of sharing economy proofreading platform, and then I'm doing these YouTube videos to help out all the people that are out there, particularly those people that are interested in going into graduate school and sort of navigating all the issues within um, graduate school. And this is just the stuff I know. So um, this was a question that was asked of Rose. And by the way, Rose, if you're watching this video, it's this is for you and you know what the rules are if you ask me a question and I answer that particular question in a video. The only thing I ask of you is within the next hour, you just have to do something nice to somebody else. It doesn't matter what it is. You can share this video. You can um, you can go and talk to your grandma, call your grandma. You can go and maybe go pick up some trash outside. Just do something nice. That's it. That's all I ask for. And then just um, you can write comments about it. You don't have to in the video and just let me know what happened because I'm curious to find out because I think it's it, this is definitely a lot more for you than it is for me. I guarantee it. You're going to benefit from this. And this is what I've learned by doing this sort of project. Um, all right. So doing a PhD in management after an engineering and MBA sort of background. And uh, there's lo actually a lot of people that are out there like that. So I personally, I'm an engineer. My undergrad was in, I did chemical engineering, and then I did a master's of applied science within management science. So kind of similar, but not quite. It's a little bit different. An MBA is a little bit more, um, you know, it's just, a, it's, it's a fundamentally different degree than sort of a master's, research master's degree. And so, but the, the important thing to know with this is that there's lots of people that have done this sort of progression. I have lots of friends, tons of friends actually, that have done this, lots of colleagues that have done this sort of progression, went from engineering to an MBA and then did a PhD after that. And so what do they go into? What's kind of a traditional sort of normal trajectory that they might go into? And this is what Rose was asking. So I, there is lots of different options that you can do, and I'm just gonna go through them. And then I would, at the end, I'm gonna tell you what I would personally do if I were you in sort of deciding what to do going forward. So you can do a PhD in finance this is a really natural progression because finance has this sort of, um, there is a lot of mathematics that you do. And so for the first about a year, year and a half, you're going to do pretty much all econometric courses and, and economic courses. So you'd take them in a, in a in a department of economics if you do a PhD. And I did a bunch of those. Um, I was thinking of doing that, a PhD in, in a sort of double major in PhD in finance, but um, I think it was one course short, I believe. And uh, I just kind of, and for whatever reason, I'm not gonna get into it. Um, and I, I stopped that progression. And anyways, so you, you do take a lot of mathematic kind of courses, econometric courses. And I have to admit, it is difficult. Uh, for me, it was very, very difficult to take those courses. They were tricky because I didn't do sort of the engineering stuff in a while, like the heavy mathematical stuff. Like, um, um, and they they treat it differently in 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 finance than they do in engineering. You do a lot of um, differential equations and things like that within um, within engineering, or at least I did. And then you go into, um, you know, doing these econometric courses. They're, they're just a different kind of mathematics. And so you have to learn that getting there and, and you get better at it, like things like set theory and things like that. But anyway, so I'm not gonna go too much into that. So um, then you can also choose, and this was the route that I chose, is do a PhD in strategic management. 
or strategy, whatever you want to call it. People call it different things. And there is a lot of, so this is probably the most common progression, I think, or one of the most common progressions is to do that as well as the PhD in finance. Um, and the reason is, is that we cover things like innovation um, and doing sort of technology management. And it just kind of tends to be the thing that people will gravitate towards. And then the other thing is, is it's really flexible sort of degree because you can go into different areas and you can sort of um, in investigate different things. Then there's PhD in operations management. That's also really common. Uh, particularly if you have an industrial engineering or, you know, chemical engineering, which is kind of process engineering or mechanical engineering background, just uh, it's sort of the thing where you're thinking about um, stuff, how a manufacturing facility works. And what I've seen people do is they kind of go and they work in a manufacturing facility and then they realize that, oh, this is really cool. There's all this stuff about optimate, uh, uh, you know, operations research. Um, there's all this kind of stuff about how sort of things work and things get done and they're interested in sort of the operations of it. So then they do a PhD in operations management. There's some really good programs out there that are doing that. Um, and you can, you can look them up, just Google it and, and you'll be, it's kind of interesting because you're looking at how things actually get made and you are, um, and so, so some of my research actually kind of looks into what they're doing now a lot. Um, you know, I wouldn't say I'm sort of an expert in that area, but I'm, I'm interested in like things like learning curves and stuff like that. So, um, you can go into and investigate these different topics that lots of people would cover. And it's basically how things get made over time. Um, and you can sort of think about that or how things, the supply chain works, right? So um, there's also a PhD in marketing. That's really, that's, that's less common, I think, but there's still people that do that. And the reason is, is that there is new product development. There's a kind of a little sub segment within uh, marketing. It's a strategic, a sort of strategic marketing and as well as new product development, which is more focused on, um, you know, getting things built within uh you know and from from a marketing perspective and it, it's it's they cover a lot of the same stuff you're going to cover in strategy but um you know it's just from a it's it's more of sort of focused on the marketing literature and so it's it's really quite promising and interesting kind of research that they do but um you know at the same time it is it is far focused on um sort of a marketing sort of bent right so and and um actually my my old supervisor my master's was uh, sort of a marketing person and, and is very done very well in in that field so and but anyways it's it's interesting and it's just uh you know sort of a different sort of sidetrack uh, so another thing that i've seen people do is a phd in sort of supply chain uh, management or, you know, analytics. These are two areas that are becoming increasingly more important. So supply chain has always been really important. It's kind of been a thing um, for the last, I don't know, probably 20 years. But analytics has kind of popped up in terms in the last few years. And really what that is, is a smattering of sort of things that have been covered before, and this would be in sort of management information systems, for example. And in this would be sort of another thing that you can investigate is, um, you know, these are particularly if you have an IT background, you do sort of computer stuff, then it makes sense to go into sort of analytics because it's things like investigating, um, you know, how a database would work or doing machine learning and putting these d databases together to come up with some sort of interesting insight. Um, and, and it varies quite substantially with this sort of analytics and thinking about analytics in terms of maybe there's operations research in there as well. And they're just putting this kind of all these different things together and coming up with a new field called analytics. And it's, it's new. Um, there is a lot of jobs in it, particularly because there is. So what has happened with that is that in the, so we've always been investigating this stuff for like 25, 30 years. It's been going on for a long time. And then all of a sudden, I think it was a rebranding by IBM. Uh, they started understanding the world in a different way. I think it was IBM. And they started calling things like analytics. Well, same with Google, right? So there's a couple of big companies that were doing this. And they just started calling it analytics. And then all of a sudden, it started to take off. And people started saying, hey, well, there's this field of analytics that these big companies are doing. Why aren't we doing it? And then, you know, all of a sudden, it created sort of this demand for people, for for graduates 
for MBAs and undergraduates in analytics, and there was nobody to teach it. So they had to put these people together and they created this sort of new field of analytics. And I think that's growing quite substantially. I don't think it's gonna change um, in the near future. And 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 sort of you can, uh, another one is, oh, um, and there's a kind of like smattering of, of different programs that you could sort of consider, right? So there would be a PhD in entrepreneurship, Really interesting stuff, except for, um, you know, that there's a very few programs that sort of focus on entrepreneurships. Generally, entrepreneurship is um, a field that is, it, it's, it's a sort of a subdomain in that there is the people that are doing entrepreneurship research. They're generally, they have studied, um, they've studied strategy or organizational theory, and then they go and sort of use that as a subdomain, um, entrepreneurship as a subdomain, because it kind of can be encapsulate, encapsulated within this subdomain. At least that's the way that it, it's been progressing, I think, and lots of people sort of recognize it that way. There's a small group of people that would recognize it as its own sort of distinct field. Um, and, and it is, like it is, in terms of a research field, it is, but then in terms of where you're going to do the PhD and get that PhD, you pretty much have to find, you go to like a, a program that's doing strategy and then you would cover um, uh, entrepreneurship in that field. So the same thing with innovation as well, right? There's only a few places that I know of that would do just strictly a PhD in innovation. Um, you know, MIT, there's a there's a school, um, I think it's SPDR, I think. I can't remember what the acronym is. It's in the UK, it's a very good school, um, that is sort of doing just completely innovation research. And there's not a lot of other schools that are doing that, just completely innovation research. It's usually sort of broadly defined and it would be under sort of strategy in general. Um, and then finally, well, that's it. So what would I actually have? Um, I, have a, I have a script that I'm reading from. Okay, so what would I recommend for you to do? So actually, this is a really personal decision. and It's going to be something that you're going to be doing for a long time going forward. So I'd highly recommend that you do the thing that you really want to do. And I realize you don't know what you want to do. If you're like me and I was the same way and I'm still kind of like, trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. But, you know, now I kind of know a lot more. Um, so I, I'm a lot more confident that this is the thing that I should be doing. So um, in general, what I would do is I would think of, so this is what I would do, get an Excel spreadsheet. So, so Rose, go get an Excel spreadsheet. I know that you're used to Excel spreadsheets and make a list of 10 so just poop, go down one through through 10 and make a list of all of the best courses that you took ever in your undergraduate and, and master's program, right? And then list those ones, then have a criteria on the columns, go on the columns, right? So, so you have your rows and then you have your columns up top and then come up with three or four different criteria of you know, what you think are really important for your career going forward. I did this, so my, my PhD advisor um, told me to do this when I was going through a career crisis and it was very helpful. So come up with three or four different criteria. And this is just traditional decision-making theory. This is what we would teach um, if you're to do a quote unquote rational decision and you would come up with these different criteria of maybe it is you want to sort of geographic location. Um, that you're interested in. Maybe it is, you know, just things that you want in your life that you can possibly get. So maybe it is making more money, right? So that could be wages, could be one of them. And then go through those courses and rank order them in terms of the, in thinking of a PhD or a career in that particular field, right? So um, another one is, you know, what is going to give you the most joy, right? So that could be another criteria. And then you have these rankings, one through 10, and then just add them up, right? And then generally what you're going to see is if you add them up and you come up with a sum for each one of those criteria, and I, I'm pretty sure that you know how to do this because you did an MBA program, um, that you are going to have three or four, maybe, maybe it's only two, that are going to be, that are going to jump out at you and that are going to be the highest ranking ones. And those are the ones that you clearly know that that is going to be probably the best ones for you at this time, right? It might change in the future, but those best ones. And then, so that narrows your field, right? So now you're, maybe it's, you really like operations research. And so you, you then you start looking at, okay, what are the best schools 
that are doing operations research or what are the ones that are doing interesting operations research? So then you take a deep dive into those schools. And then finally, you would sort of go through the different people that are at those different schools and say, oh, this guy's doing or this girl is doing something really cool in this area. I think that's really cool. So I would just go and start looking at the different faculty that are working at those different places. And you'll quickly find out. So the way that most schools work, most business schools, is that there is only a handful of people that are very research active. And then there's a bunch of other people. Um, it's just a Pareto principle that and anything in life is like this, right? So there's a couple of people that are very research active. And, and then there are a bunch of other people doing sort of research, but, you know, like not as sort of research active. And so that gives you an idea of what to look for and who to sort of seek out going forward. I've got a lot of videos on that kind of stuff. So you can watch some of those ones um, it, from, from the past. But anyways, Rose, I hope that that was very helpful. And um, for you that are also watching this, um, hopefully you found this very, very helpful in terms of making a decision in sort of all these different things that, that people do go through if they do an engineering and an MBA program. And then they're thinking about doing a PhD going forward. There's lots of different options for you. It's a very flexible degree sort of combination. And um, it's very um, lucrative in a lot of different ways. So so congrats on getting that. That's amazing, by the way. And uh, I wish you the best on the decision. And by the way, you, uh, yeah, I, I'm the only thing I'm asking you is just go do something nice and do that within the next hour. Whatever it is, stop what you're doing. Just do something nice for somebody else. And um, let me know. If, if put it in the comments. I'm curious to find out. All right. So hopefully you like this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. And uh, take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.